exactly what um, I believe. If this stuff is Chris and Katie again, where people are assuming a lot, I haven't I haven't received anything. So until we know for sure for sure what's going on, I'm not going to speculate any further. You know, at the end of the day, um, I have to be served. The person on my end in my court record is not listed, so I can't assume who it is. So before I before I can even file anything in the courts, I need to find out who um, I need to file it against. So without that with that being said, um, Kendall, hey, how are you doing? Grand Rising, I can't believe I actually made a live. Oh, it's nice to see you. Yeah, it's early. Well, it's early for most people, but it's really not. People should be up getting ready for work unless they're in like California. <laughs> hey, Caitlin, it's nice to see you. But then I realized, you know what, at the end of the day, <clears throat> we know that they haven't been trying to search for their son. We know that they have been putting up roadblock after roadblock after roadblock for the people that are trying to search for their son or find any information. Um, so this goes to show you more than anything who the problems are in this case and why are they because I, I mean i haven't talked to them so as far as the ladies line um i haven't even seen them in the flesh the only thing i've seen them is, is stuff on social media and of course us going through their interviews and stuff like that i've never even seen them in the flesh like it's 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 absolutely nutty good morning mel uh but either way no matter how you look at it um it's 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 lies so we'll be dealing with that but i'm pretty sure she's going to have to because i think the temporary is only good for two weeks so that means she's in order for her to extend it she's got to physically go in on the 8th to talk to them and i think that that is an actual court proceeding and there she's going to have to proffer some information like legit information she just can't say oh my gosh i'm fearful she's got to produce like i mean we're online they have cameras at their house uh if this harassment existed they should have proof of that and there is no there, there's no proof there could be there absolutely could be no proof unless it's manufactured because i haven't even reached out to these people it's wild the effort that they put into you, not their son. Exactly. And that's another thing. That's why I say, you know, it's very crystal clear at this point moment, they are not trying to find their son. As a matter of fact, they're kind of trying to um, unlawfully uh, quelch any person speaking of the case. I'm not stupid. I'm not Nick Barris. I don't work for um, a, a company that has boardrooms that the control what comes out of my mouth. This is America. I can have my opinions. I can have my criticisms and I can bring this stuff online. And she does not have to watch it. If it's so harassing to her, then she should just change the freaking channel. But one thing she can't do is go to a court and lie and say I'm harassing her because I'm talking on my own channel about her case. That's something they can't do. But wouldn't you say that at this point it's crystal clear they don't want him found? Um, because I haven't been around them. All I've been doing is going to businesses and people that have reached out to me. I can prove literally everything. Uh, they have that um, you harass or threaten them three times. There's no there's no possibility. There's and not unless they've manufactured stuff. There's no possibility. I haven't even spoke to them. I haven't sent them emails, they, messages. I haven't even asked them questions in the, in the Facebook chat when they were in all those chat rooms. I never even asked them questions. You know, I never, ha I have never spoken to these people. Like I said, the only thing I've got is is the messenger where Chris reached out to me to let me know that he was, you know, back in the day when those people were talking about uh, our uh, impersonating uh, Chris Proudfoot and he came into the chat, he reached out to me to let me know that that wasn't him and that's not true. So outside of that, and that's a contact he made to me, not the other way around, it is the only contact that uh, I've had with either one of them. And that was literally months ago. So it's clear that they're trying to distract from Sebastian's case. There's no other explanation for this, none whatsoever. Are you trying to um, keep Seth from getting his son? Oh, good gracious. Uh, girl, we know you're not deserving. Them. Yeah, and it's all, and, and I don't, I, I cannot further life of me. Like it's literally a felony to lie about this stuff and let them manufacture and intentionally manufacture uh, proof before the court. That's even worse. Like this is like they're, it, they don't, obviously they don't mind lying under oath. So, you know, we have to look at that aspect because if they don't mind lying in a court, would they mind lying to a law enforcement? You know, um, if they don't mind lying to a court and literally doing underhanded stuff, literally breaking the law, committing a felony, then what else are they willing to do? You know, clearly these people have no problem breaking the law. They have no problem lying to um, a law enforcement or courts. So what makes us believe that they're going to be truthful about Sebastian? If they're going, if they're willing to do all of this, you see what I'm saying? Hey, Kimberly, it's nice to see you. <clears throat> they want uh, rid of every everyone that is uh, uh, searching and bringing attention to Sebastian. They want the case to die out because they just want this child to be missing. They screwed up a lot and they are very upset. Thank you, Kimberly. And Lisa, you got the uh, gifted membership, nice. Good morning, True Crime Addict. So Sebastian Rogers, for those that are just tuning in, is a 15-year-old autistic boy that disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and has not been heard or seen from since. And uh, he was inside, according to his mother, inside the home with his mother 
and apparently the whole home was locked. That's what she told law enforcement. She told the whole law enforcement that, the, that it was locked. Chris told everybody, if anybody's at that front door, there's going to be a, a figure or a shadow coming out of the front door. None of that existed that, that uh, night or into the early morning or in the morning when law enforcement got there. They searched all the cameras. They've got the footage. There's no sign that Sebastian even walked out of the home, not through a window, not through a door, not through the front door, back door, nothing. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. God bless you. I know. What are they going to do when Silver starts uh, digging this coming week? I have no earthly idea because he's already been digging, but apparently um, he should be careful because they will lie under oath to try to um, get him arrested, especially if he's getting close. So I, I doubt he has anything going on in Horn Lake. If they're not attacking him and they're only attacking me, then clearly he's probably outside of his because I don't think um, this child is anywhere near Memphis. I think this child is um, either in Hendersonville, Gallatin, or White House. That's if I had to bet money on it, that's where it is because Chris wasn't in the Memphis area to get comfortable enough to do anything in that area. He had been there since like, I think January and he was, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, January and he was gone by um, February 26th. So he had no time. I mean, he was working and going home, you know, except on some of the weekends, most of the weekends he came home up until the event where CPS was involved. And then he just never came home again and basically told Katie, it's, it's your son or it's me. Well, her son disappeared a month later and they're living their best life ever. And, um, you know, a lot of people are not a lot of people, a lot of people, well, there aren't a lot of people. There's a, a massive amount of people that agree with that, that, um, that statement. And so it's just a little bizarre to me that um, they're, so obviously we're digging in a, a lot deeper, you know, and I'm allowed to do investigative reporting. I'm allowed to talk to people. I'm allowed to go places. I'm allowed to do whatever the hell I want within the law. Just because they don't like that I'm doing it doesn't mean they can lie under oath. And furthermore, this was only a stunt, you know, and I have to think that somebody got in Katie's ear <clears throat> and tried to convince her that this was a good idea without playing the tape through. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's do this because, oh, she won't come. To and I'll come anywhere for a court hearing. You're going to have to prove your damn case, lady. And I can prove for a fact, a, a, a absolute 100 percent fact you lied under oath because I've only been to uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee one time. It was for filming and documenting purposes. I never talked to, talk to Katie. I never. Uh, the only thing I did was drive by their house, which I'm allowed to do on a public roadway. I broke no laws, and I filmed while I was doing, which is, which is in the course of my business and my job title. So they absolutely 100% lied, and I bet you she failed to tell them that I'm reporting on her son's case. Like this is a constitutional. If you look at if you look at it, it even says the only thing that they cannot do is if it's covered under the Constitution. With all my work is covered under the Constitution. I have freedom of press. I have freedom of speech. I have freedom of assembly. So, and, and the only way, and I read all everything that uh, I could on ex parte order, she had to tell them that she was in fear for her life, that I was going to cause Im Im imminent bodily harm or death to her. That's what she had to testify under oath to get that ex parte harassment and protective order. That's what she had to attest under oath is that I was an imminent, an imminent threat to her personal safety and or life. And it's because I'm questioning, yep, the pickle bag. We're questioning a lot of a lot of things and they don't like it because we're digging a little deeper i'm doing my due diligence and i'm following the leads and following the case and so they're trying to say that that's somehow well maybe that is jeopardizing their life in all fairness you know i mean because it, it when when the truth comes out i have a funny feeling they're going to be in a lot of trouble and they are going to be facing heavy consequences because of their actions um you know related to sebastian rogers so it, it, it but that's not the the, the, the threshold needed it, it needs to be for me and and that i'm not doing so we'll find out how corrupt this county is very quickly because um, it's my understanding that she's going to have to prove on the 8th uh, that she has sufficient evidence for grounds to continue this uh, protection order and there's no way and like, like i said unless she produces um a fraudulent information uh, there's no way she could she can pr possibly produce that um now and, and it is my understanding that they just don't extend it without just cause so she's going to have to produce everything against me and there's not going to be anything they can't say a month ago me driving by and filming in my car for the three times that i drove three or four times i drove by their house that that justifies harassment there's no possibility of that because that wasn't the intent the intent is as i'm recording this location because a crime was committed and i'm doing it from public property no different than news media um they can't prevent me from doing that what a liar seriously wish uh there were more fearless women like yourself defending missing children and giving them a voice well, that's why I'm such a threat to these hate channels that protect these bad parents. Now, you know why they, they target me and me alone. They ain't targeting uh, Dolly. They ain't targeting JLR, right? Because they, they don't get shit right. They target me because we do our due diligence. I told you we have a high batting average on this channel, even though they've lied to all their audience about that for, for a really long time. 
we we do like i said i used to work for lawyers i mean we i've done a lot of different types of investigations um you know i'm a little rusty on my uh, my legal paperwork but you know i'm i'm learning as i relearning as i go i guess i should say it's not like riding a bike okay i can tell you that because i'm the one that's that's the most fearless and i think that it's because they don't like she hates seth so much and um i think that's what it is it's because i'm you know team sebastian and team sebastian is basically team seth because katie and chris haven't done anything for the boy you know so team sebastian is just definitely not chris and katie uh, team sebastian is a 100 team seth 